Hi, my name is Stacy Silva Boutwell. I am the Portuguese American mom, and today I am going to be cooking something from my cookbook, Easy Portuguese Cookbook. We are getting ready for football season, and there's nothing better than a nice, juicy sandwich when you're sitting around with your family and friends watching a football game, soccer game, if you're Portuguese. But football season is pretty important to Portuguese people, too. So. Today we are going to start with bifanas. Now bifanas need to be marinating overnight, six to eight hours at least, but I like overnight. Um, so we're going to start with the marinade and then we are going to magically take it out of the fridge and it'll be all marinated for us to get going. Um, I have here a bowl and inside the bowl I've lined it with just a zip top bag. In the zip top bag we are going to have some very thinly sliced pork loin. Okay, so you want it nice and thinly sliced. A bifana is actually not beef, it's pork. And it's well marinated pork that we are going to just pop into this bag. And we're gonna add all the marinade ingredients because that will help us to massage into the meat with all the ingredients directly on it. All right, so we're gonna put all this in here. And I've doubled the recipe from the cookbook. The cookbook just has four bifanas. I'm just going to kind of double all the ingredients, all the marinade ingredients, and we will be able to have a party. We have all of our pork loin meat in our zip top bag, and we're going to just start adding things in, right? So we have some pimenta moiva. Now pimenta moiva is a Portuguese um, pepper that has been ground and salted, which makes like this boiling process. All the instructions are of my dad making this specific pimenta moida on my website if you want to see it. If not, you want to get kind of a not so spicy, it's more for the flavor, uh, crushed ground pepper. Um, even if it's like a Thai pepper, Thai pepper, you gotta be careful because that can be very, very spicy. So use a little bit less if that's what you're gonna be using, like a Thai pepper paste, you wanna use a little bit less. All right, so we have the pepper in the bag. And then to this, we're gonna add um, half a teaspoon of white pepper, two teaspoons of paprika, and then a couple of bay leaves. We're gonna add two bay leaves are enough, dry bay leaves. And then we want a good amount of salt. And that's kosher salt. You always wanna use kosher salt um, when you're cooking. And then we're gonna get the other aromatics ready to go. Let's get some garlic. So we've got some fresh garlic cloves here. Just gonna crush these up. They don't have to be very processed because they're just part of the marinade, right? So we are going to crush, crush, and then we're gonna get rid of the peels. All right. And just to release a lot of the flavor, I'm going to give it a rough chop. And that way it distributes throughout the bag a little bit easier. All right. So we're going to take this, put it into the bag. and then we need some lemon. So the lemon really helps um, with the acidity and with the penetration of all the ingredients into, into the meat. Okay. Let's see if we can do this one without the lemon squeezer. You want the juice of a lemon in there. And then kind of give it a little bit of a massage at this point, just to kind of distribute so that I know that all of these ingredients have hit each piece of meat. Okay, and don't worry about the bay leaf, that dried bay leaf is gonna get crushed up, that's okay. Don't worry about that. All right, got that. All right, so now we just want some dry white wine. I use a screw top dry white wine because I'm not about to spend $30 on a bottle of wine for marinade, but I can still drink this one, so that's good. 
All right. So we're going to put that in there. All right. So now all you do is you zip it up, squeeze out all the air. Okay. And that's what we have here. Okay. So that just sits and it soaks up all of those aromatics and spices and it will make for a delicious sandwich in a little while. All right, so put that into the fridge. Right now, I have a couple of pieces of slab pork in a, an iron, a cast iron skillet. I'm rendering them off because I didn't have lard with me. I didn't have any lard, I didn't have any shortening. So what I did was I just took a couple of pieces that I use for my Portuguese baked beans and I put them in this cast iron skillet. I'm rendering it off to get the fat, which is essentially lard. So anytime that you have some fat trimmings, if you put them in the freezer, you can make lard at any point. This blends a great flavor to our beef on a sandwiches. So I'm going to remove these now and this does two things. Now we have a screaming hot pan filled with lard. I am going to add a little bit of oil but I'm not actually going to add my regular Portuguese um, olive oil. I am going to grab for a neutral oil that has a little bit of a hotter smoke point because I wasn't able to render as much as we need. We do need a good amount of fat in this. There we go. That's good. And we're going to take these very well marinated bifana pieces and we're going to pop them right into our skillet. Here we go. Ready for the sizzle? Oh yeah, that's what you want to hear. We don't want to overcrowd the pan. I'm just going to do four at a time. Get one more going there. And we're just going to let those be a few minutes on each side and let's see what they, oh yeah, we're already starting to get some caramelization. That's perfect. This is going to be a double sear. So we are going to sear these on one side, sear them on the other side. We're going to take them out, let them rest, do the next batch and then we're going to come back and do it all over again so we get a good browning. We are going to do the re-sear, which is the second sear. We got a little bit of color on some of these, but not as much as I would like. So we're going to put these back in the pan. I'm going to do five at a time because we don't need quite as much space now. And we're just going to try and get some, the purpose of this is not to cook through now. Now the purpose of this is to actually get color on the pork chops. Check it. Oh, see that's what we're looking for right there. That's what we're looking for. Oh yeah. We want a little bit of that dark brown here. Oh, perfect. So it goes from this to that. That's what you're looking for. Perfect. And, yeah. So this is what we have to put in our beautiful Portuguese puff sink. Right here. Perfect, perfect. We have fresh from my local bakery, Portuguese puff sink. Now, I understand that not everyone is going to have a Portuguese bakery at their fingertips. So if you have some fresh Italian bread, something, you want something that's crusty on the outside and soft and delicious on the inside, that is perfectly okay. So I'm just going to take this roll 
and I am going to give it a good slice. And if you want to take a look inside. I also have a recipe for these if you really want to get authentic right in the cookbook. Um, but this is nice and soft inside. You're going to take two of these little fillets and you're going to pop them in here. If you want to add a little bit more moisture with adding some pepper, that's great. If you don't, that's fine. It is a little dry, but you know what happens when you pile this up on a plate is that mood right there that's called mood that sauce that happens you can spoon a little bit of that right over and that's also delicious so we can take our spoon take some of this and add it right on top of those fillets and that is absolutely delicious as well so you just put it out there if you want to do this for a football game you don't have to put two in right you can get smaller rolls you can put one each and you can have your own Bifana sliders. Perfect. A beautiful Portuguese Bifana.